Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I wanted to do a full beginner's guide to LaunchBox. In this video, I'll show you how to download it, get it set up, and import your first set of games. Now, it's really simple to use. LaunchBox, in my opinion, is the best front end for Windows. Hands down, it works for Windows 7, as long as you're fully updated to SP1, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10. There is no Mac version, Linux, or Android version as of making this video, but if you're running a Windows machine, we can go ahead and get started. LaunchBox allows you to easily import and sort your retro games. You can launch them directly from within LaunchBox, or if you have the paid version of LaunchBox, you can use BigBox, and I'll show you that by the end of this video because it's definitely something you might want to think about. LaunchBox is free to use, but they do offer a premium version right over here. Get premium with BigBox. Regular license, good for one year. It's $20. You will get one year of updates. After that, you can still use Big Box, but you won't be able to update your system to the latest version using premium features. If you stay on the last update you receive before your license has to be renewed, you can use Big Box permanently. The forever update license, 50 bucks, is a lifetime license for LaunchBox. Both the regular license for 20 and the forever update license allow you to use this on as many Windows PCs as you personally own. We're gonna be starting out with the free version here. We're just gonna go to download. All links will be in the description. We need to put our email in here. We're gonna click download. It's gonna send us a link so we can download LaunchBox. It's 187 megabytes as of making this video. The next thing we're gonna need is RetroArch. Now I use RetroArch for most of my emulators inside of LaunchBox, it just makes it so much easier. We want the portable version, so I'm gonna download 64-bit version of RetroArch here. I don't want the installer, I want it to be portable because I can place it in my LaunchBox directory and if I ever just wanna migrate all of that data to another drive or another PC, it's gonna make it so much easier to do. If you're running a 32-bit operating system, you will need the 32-bit version. I'm running 64. I'm going to download this. Now, I've already downloaded them. They are in my downloads folder. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to set it up, and we're going to import Super Nintendo games into LaunchBox. The ROM sets that I use for Super Nintendo are called No Intro. So if you search on Google for No Intro ROM set, you can find everything you'll ever need. This has about 700 games in it, I believe. They are all zipped up and ready to go. We now have LaunchBox downloaded here and RetroArch. I'm gonna go ahead and extract RetroArch. You will need 7-Zip or WinRAR. Now, let's go ahead and install LaunchBox. Double click. Choose your language here. I accept, and it's gonna install under users, your username, minus NUC8, LaunchBox. Click Next. Setup will create program shortcuts for the following Start Menu folder. Next. And I also want to create desktop icons. We're just gonna go ahead and install LaunchBox. All right guys, so this is LaunchBox 8.3, but in the next few updates, they will be phasing this old interface out for LaunchBox Next. So in this video, we're gonna be working with LaunchBox Next. You can actually start it from here, or if you go into your LaunchBox directory, you can create a shortcut for LaunchBox Next and place it on your desktop. I'm gonna start it from here. Yes. Now all the bugs aren't ironed out just yet, but in the next two releases, the old interface will be phased out and it'll be strictly LaunchBox Next, you'll see. Now it's time to start importing some games, but first thing we need to do is place our RetroArch folder inside of our LaunchBox directory for easy access. We're gonna head over to our LaunchBox directory, which will be on our C drive, users, your username, LaunchBox. Inside of here, I'm gonna create a folder called emulators. I'm gonna right click, new folder, emulators. Now this is where we're gonna place all of our emulators. I'm gonna open it up, snap it over to the right hand side, open up my downloads folder or wherever you put your RetroArch folder and place it right in here. So now that we have RetroArch situated, 
we're going to launch it one time because we need to download an SNES core. Or if you're importing a different system besides SNES, we'll need to download that core. Double click RetroArch. You can use your keyboard to navigate. We're going to scroll to Online Updater, Core Updater, and we're going to find a Super Nintendo Emulator Core. Scroll all the way down here. A really easy one to use is SNES 9X. Click Enter. It's going to download it, extract it. We can now close RetroArch. In this video, we're just importing SNES games. I'm going to go ahead and close this prompt down. You will only see this one time if you don't have anything imported in a launch box. We're going to head over to Tools, Import, ROM files. We're going to click next. I'm going to add a folder. Now I'm going to navigate to where I have my Super Nintendo games. They're on my desktop for now, but I usually have them on an external drive. This is just for easy access. Find your Super Nintendo folder that contains all of your ROMs. Make sure it's highlighted. Click OK. LaunchBox is automatically going to scan through there and import the games inside of that folder for us. Click Next. Platform for imported games. Drop down menu. We want to find Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Next. We haven't added an emulator yet, so we'll click Add. It'll bring up the Add Emulator menu. Emulator name. We're going to use RetroArch for Super Nintendo, so we're going to click the drop down, find RetroArch. Our emulator application path, we need to find RetroArch. So we'll go to Browse. It'll automatically open you up in your LaunchBox directory. Remember, we created a folder called Emulators. Inside of there, we put RetroArch. Scroll all the way down to the application and double click. From here, we also have associated platforms. So if you want to import and use Atari 2600 games, you can also use RetroArch. There are a lot of different systems you can use. This is already pre-configured for the SNES 9X underscore Libretro core that we downloaded inside of RetroArch. If you want to change that, we can double click, drop the menu down, and choose a different core. But we're going to be using the SNES 9X core that we downloaded. Click OK. Click Next. Would you like to move or copy your files? I'm going to copy the files into the LaunchBox Games folder. You can always place them there first and then import them. This is just going to make it easier. It's going to make a copy of every single ROM and place it inside of your LaunchBox directory in a folder called Games under the correct system. So we're doing SNES. It's going to create a Super Nintendo Entertainment System folder for us and place our ROMs there. Would you like to download metadata for your games? Of course we would. Search for game information from the LaunchBox Games database. This is recommended. You can also use Wikipedia. I usually just use the LaunchBox Games database. It works perfectly for me. Click Next. Would you like to download images for your games? Of course we would. That's why we're using LaunchBox. It's a beautiful interface. I'm going to leave everything checked. Next. We also have the option to configure EMU Movies. Now you can create an account over at EMU Movies. It is free to use, but they also have a donation option. I'm going to configure my EMU Movies account here. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go sign up for a free account. I definitely recommend it. From here, you're just going to put in your user ID that you signed up for EMU Movies with and the password. I'm going to do this real quick. I went ahead and signed into my EMU Movies account. I do own a premium account over there. There are tons of videos to download. There's music, there's manuals, there's CD art, and there's just some stuff that the LaunchBox Games database won't have. We're going to click Next. Would you like to specify any custom options? Not for Super Nintendo. It's pretty cut and dry. We're going to click Next here. LaunchBox is going to parse the files for us, the name of the game we're importing, the location of the game, the extension. Click Finish. At the very bottom here, you will get a progress bar. It's now refreshing local metadata from the LaunchBox Games database. 
I'm importing over 600 games, so it might take a little while. It's going to download all of the metadata, box art, and as much information on this game as we can find. Be patient. Let it finish up. All right, guys. So my Super Nintendo games were imported successfully, 777 of them. Now here we have regular box art showing up. If I go to image group, I can change it to 3D boxes. I can change it to carts. I can change it to screenshots. There are tons of settings in here. We can arrange by date added, date modified, developer, favorite. Just go down the list, find what you like. View. We can go for a list view, show hidden games, show broken games, hide games with missing videos. There's just so many options in here. It's going to be hard to go over every single one of them. Your best bet is to experiment. Now that I have my games imported, I'm going to go ahead and start one. We're just going to scroll down the list here. When I see something I like, I'll go ahead and start it up. You can also search over here. Killer Instinct. Double click. I am using an Xbox One controller connected to my PC. RetroArch will automatically detect it for us, and we can start playing a game. It's as simple as that. Just get right into it. If you want to exit your game, all you have to do is press escape on your keyboard, or if you have the premium version of LaunchBox, you can set up controller automation and press the hotkeys you set up. So yeah, that's pretty much it. LaunchBox is very simple to use. We just imported SNES games. We have all of our box art, all of the information over here, everything you need to have your games in a nice collection. If you want to start importing more systems, you can follow what I just did using RetroArch, or you can head over to LaunchBox's official YouTube channel, and there are hundreds of tutorials on how to set up different emulators. From NES to GameCube, Wii U, Dreamcast, anything you can think of is over on the channel. I just showed you LaunchBox. This is the free version. Now I want to move over to some premium features. We're going to be taking a look at Big Box. Now I already have a big box build set up. We're going to launch it from the desktop here. If you are a fan, we don't have to tell you that video This is just an intro video that I have set up. You can choose from several or you can make your own. The LaunchBox forum is full of themes, full of videos, full of artwork and information. Everything you need to know about LaunchBox and Big Box is over in the forum. So I definitely suggest at least signing up for the forum and checking it out. I'm going to skip the intro video here, and we'll get right into Big Box. I got a lot of stuff imported into this build. We'll just go into Neo Geo here. Got all of the marquees over on the left-hand side, or clear logos, whatever you want to call them. All the videos for each game. And there are a lot of different themes to choose from also. I'm going to go into Options, Views. This is the default theme, Critical Zone Version 2. I'm going to head over to one of my favorites. It's a newer one. Unified. I'm going to back up. Switch my theme for me. And now I'm running the Unified theme. So as you can see, I have my wheel over on the right hand side. It will disappear for a second. Let it play the video for the system we're on. I got thousands of games imported into here. We'll go into one of them. Let's do N64. Now you can fully customize this. You can have the cart show up on the left hand side with the box. You can have it slide in. If you're using disc based games, you can have the disc spin or not spin. There's just tons of ways to customize Big Box. And like I said at the beginning, I totally think it's worth the $50 price tag if you want a lifetime license. If you ever purchase LaunchBox, you'll be sent a license. This is a license.xml file. It'll be sent to your email address that you bought the license with. All you'll need to do is take the license, which is on my desktop, and place it in your LaunchBox directory. Remember, mine's under C drive, users, my username, LaunchBox. So I'll just place it right in here. 
Also, if you want to start up LaunchBox Next from the desktop, as of making this video, it is not the default front end. The old LaunchBox version is, but Next is coming within the next few updates. You can always make a shortcut. So we'll go into the LaunchBox directory, right click launchbox.next, create shortcut, place this on the desktop. Now we can start LaunchBox Next up. This LaunchBox version is now licensed to ETA Prime. It no longer says free version here. You'll always get this pop-up with news. You can disable it here, don't show again. I recommend keeping it enabled because every time there's a new update, it'll give you the change log, new tutorials, and things like that. With the premium version of LaunchBox, we can change the look of this also. We're gonna go over here, tools. You can also access it from this on the right-hand side. Options. Scroll down, we can change our fonts. We can change the color scheme. Let's go with Alice Blue. Click OK. And now we have a new little look to it. We can also add backgrounds, or if you click on a game, the background art will show up for that game. So it really is an all-in-one emulation front end for Windows. You can also import your Steam games or other PC games you can add your movies in here. This could be the front end to a media center. There's really endless possibilities with LaunchBox and Big Box. Definitely go to the website, give the free version a try, and if you really like it, you can go ahead and pick up a premium key. Really appreciate you guys watching. Links are in the description. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.